Uh, who's speaking now, Steve? Loretta Master, the Cleveland Fed president, kind of sticking to her hawkish guns, but maybe showing a little give. Let me go through what she says, and you can figure out what it all means at the end of it. She says she supports the average Fed forecast, calling for another rate increase and holding rates sufficiently restricted for some time. She says inflation risks are tilted to the upside. And she goes on to say we are likely at or near a holding point at the funds rate. So to the extent she thinks rates ought to rise, doesn't think they ought to rise a lot. She says it's appropriate to keep the funds rate at that peak for some time. A little bit more give here later on. She says whether the Fed needs to hike will depend on all kinds of things like the outlook. She mentions risks on both sides, tightening too much, tightening too little. Says policymakers need to be nimble here. The rise in the 10 years, she says, was larger than it was she was than she expected. And if it's sustained, this rise could help moderate demand. Ostensibly, that's that idea of doing the, work, the Fed's work for it. Events in the Middle East, she says, are still unfolding and adding to uncertainty that's out there. On the outlook, Bester will say consumer business and business spending are both expected to moderate. Growth is expected to slow below trend next year, especially. That's an important part of her outlook. Labor market conditions. A little bit contradictory here. She says, paint a picture of moderation and resilient. Wage pressures are easing by some measures. And finally, it will be appropriate. This is interesting, but don't take it too dovishly. She says it will probably be appropriate to reduce the funds rate when inflation is still somewhat above our goal. But the Fed will have to communicate. That doesn't mean it's, re it's abandoning its 2% target. So one of the more hawks on the committee, Scott, saying, you know what? We're very close, but she still thinks on balance one more, but not sort of hell bent on it is the best way I would put it. So you, you've had, you know, roughly, I don't know, 23 or so hours to think about what Mr. Powell had to say yesterday. And I guess my takeaway, as I expressed at the top of the show, Steve, was that I didn't think it's like he was all that hawkish. It's just he didn't meet the doves, if you will, who certainly have sounded more dovish in the days leading up to Powell before the economic club. He wasn't as explicit as some of the others maybe have been regarding the movement in the bond market doing some of the work for um, the Fed. H how would you express it today? I don't have much difference with that, Scott. I think that th th there's not much to be gained from debating whether the Fed does that other quarter or not. Uh, you can see the probabilities went way down. I haven't looked uh, in the wake of Mester here if they're down further or pretty much the same. Um, the debate is really about how long the Fed will hold. And that's going to be at least six months. Even R Rafael Bostic this morning talked about not thinking about cuts until sometime the next, next, second half of next year. That's really the debate. That's where the market is right now. Um, maybe there were people out there thinking that Powell was going to be much more explicitly dovish. But I don't see how you go into a meeting where the uh, inflation rate was uh, up on the month of September. The data has been so strong and expect the Fed chair to be dovish. I just can't really help myself if people came to those kind of conclusions. That was not what he said. That's not what he can say, Scott. It's kind of silly to think that he's going to get to, oh, all clear. Inflation is 3.7 percent, 336,000 jobs, GDP at 5.4 percent. What do you want the Fed chair to say in that context when he's trying to bring inflation down? Yeah, I appreciate it, Steve. Thank sure. you. It's good insight. Steve Leisman, our senior economics correspondent.